you know, leave it to beer announcer to get shot halfway through the show. I know, right? We're literally on episode 12, and the dude's lying in a hospital bed like a lazy asshole. Yeah, it's not like we can announce this stuff ourselves. Who are we, cavemen? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. We need some, I don't know, like a, like a hot chick or something like that? Would that work? Yeah, that would be amazing. But wait a second. Would it matter if she was a hot chick? Because nobody sees the beer announcer. Okay, but if we are going to have a beer announcer, should we do like an audition process where like a bunch of hot chicks come in and they're all like, hey, what's up? I can announce beer for you. Or should we just pick one girl at random? Ain't nobody got time for that. All right, I like it. New beer announcer, go to it. So, uh, today's, um... <laughs> Shit, uh, today's Phillips Showcase, I mean Snowcase beer is a train wreck from the Phillips Brewing Company. What was new beer announcer doing? Like, did you train her? I mean, we gave her a microphone and we're like, go at it. You probably didn't give her any beer though, did you? No. What's wrong with you? This whole thing has been a train wreck. It smells like vodka. No, it smells... I mean, it smells like barley wine. It smells whiny. It smells like barley wine that someone poured a shot of vodka into. That's what it smells like to me. Face hold up. Oh yeah, that's a train wreck. Oh, wow. Oh, it crashed right into my taste buds. Yeah, it, it destroyed six families on the way down. Ooh, it's something else. It's sort of subtle in its, in its opener, and then it just hits you with a train wreck of flavors, is how I feel. It's like you get nothing at first, and then as soon as it hits the back of your mouth, it's like every flavor comes to life across my whole palate. Then the aftertaste is D, wait for it, delightful. Yeah, it's actually really good. It's not strong, but it's there. It's like, hey, I'm the aftertaste, I'm around, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna peace out. I know that you've got other things to do, so I'm not gonna stick around in your mouth for eight years. It's kind of like doing shots with their own chaser. So, I don't know if I could drink a lot of this beer, but I am, I kinda like it. I kinda like it too, and honestly, I think I might be able to drink a lot of it, because first of all, it is 10% alcohol by volume, so, it gets you drunk pretty quick, and honestly, the more I drink of it, the more I like it. It's kind of like Becky from Big Brother. I was hit in the face with a train, uh, but it was still beautiful. I don't watch Big Brother, so I don't understand that reference. So, Ed, if you were to give this beer some kind of a filthy rating, what would it be? Well, my original thought when I put this beer in my mouth was to spit it out. Um... But the more that I drink it, the better it gets. The aftertaste really was delightful. So I'm going to give it a 3.25. Wow, 3.25 is higher than I thought you were going to give it when you started speaking. But now that you've explained yourself, I really understand why you gave that rating. Thanks, Ed. I also wasn't exactly excited when I first tried the beer. But as I mentioned before, as I continue to drink it, I love it. It's really tasty. I find the aftertaste enjoyable. And I think that I'm gonna give it a three, not 3.25. You're just a little bit adventurous there. But I'll give it a solid three and say that this is a real tasty barley wine. Wow, you took us on a verbal adventure there. This is a train wreck and you know, trains are on tracks and tracks are linear and eventually that shit's gonna come back around. It always comes back around, but you know who brings it back around best? Female beer announcer. You know, it's really too bad that Ed couldn't have, like, a fuller beard. Even Jeff has a nicer beard than Ed. I bet he has more Twitter followers, too. Today's Craft Crossing beer is Get Off My Bach from Central City. 1,300 Twitter followers is not that impressive. Wow, female beer announcer really gave it to us there. She, uh, really doesn't like us? Yeah, how can she be so mean to us already? Does she follow me on Twitter? I don't think anyone follows you on Twitter, Ed. Um, oh. It smells kind of like fruity urine. I feel like this is a fantastic summertime sitting on a patio, drinking all day type beer. It has a decent flavor profile. Um, I think you're just disappointed because you want it stronger. Maybe I do want it stronger, and maybe that is because we're filming this in December, 
And maybe, and this is just my opinion, that if you're putting together a Christmas beer advent calendar, don't put in beers that would be perfect for the summer. Because that's the thing is that I do agree with you, Ed. This would be a great summer beer, but that's not what I want in my Christmas advent calendar. I want beers that are gonna keep me warm in the cold, cold December nights. Uh, I'm really curious what you would give this beer. I would give it 1.5 beards. I'm not really thrilled with the beer itself, Ed, and uh, honestly, the color, the smell, nothing of it is really doing it for me. I don't think this beer is worthy of beards, but I will give it two and a half patio chairs. Listen, Ed, I don't want to lie to you. I've got a bit of a crush on female beer announcer. So I'm going to go back there and see if she wants to go out on a date. I don't think this is going to end well for Jeff, but let's see how this goes. Hey, female beer announcer, you want to go out sometime? Ew! Perv! Oh. Today's craft advent beer is St. Beatnik from Flying Monkey's Craft Brewery, which Jeff should do. Go. Fly, monkey, fly. Hey, Jeff, uh, how'd that go? Not well, it. Oh, it didn't go well. Oh, my penis. So, uh, Jeff, it really seems like she gave you the old beat down. Yeah, she gave me the old beat nick right in my beat stickles. It hurt. Definitely was not the beat down you were looking for. Oh, it smells so good. No, I was saying that I could smell that. Like, it's so chocolatey, right? It's like, mmm, it's like Easter morning. I'm a little worried that this is a chocolate stout from Flying Monkey. Why does that worry you, Ed? Because it makes me think of the 90s band Rainbow Butt Monkey, and I hope it's not that kind of chocolate. Well, you know, you bringing up the Rainbow Butt Monkeys reminds me of the Butthole Surfers. Two great 90s bands and two locations where chocolate comes out of. Uh, and two holes to put it in. I eye to that. It's like a dark chocolate stout. And I know that, like, that doesn't, it, it's already very dark, but I'm not referring to the beer. The chocolate flavor is very dark chocolatey, you know, and even in the aftertaste, it's like you just had a dark chocolate bar combined with, in my opinion, a very good stout. It doesn't have that smooth, creamy flavor that you would normally get, but it really brings the, the bites of the alcohol with the chocolate in. I like it. I'm a fan. That's what, I, that's what I like about it, is that it's not overpoweringly stout. It really lets the chocolate shine through. And that actually is a fantastic effect because the stout's still there. He's still playing backup. You know, he's like, chocolate, you're the lead singer. I'm just going to play the drums back here. Jeff, I feel like you're only okay with the stout in the back playing the drums because they would never let you be lead singer. They never would. And they said it was because I couldn't sing. But I'll prove them all wrong. Ready? And no that was a thing that happened. I didn't think that I could go for six hours, but I sure did, didn't I? Oh. It's time for the ratings, ladies and gentlemen. And this chocolate stout, I think it deserves four beards. And wow, it's a tasty stout. It does everything right. And God damn it if I don't love fucking chocolate. That is a high rating for you. You're on one side of the scale or the other. You're either really high or really low, and there's very little in the middle. There's some in the middle. You know, I'm going to give this a 3.75 beards. So you're just going to prices right me again. Well, it's, I don't feel it's a four, but it's a good beer. It's definitely a very good beer. And you know what? I think that you are correct in giving it a high rating, even if it's not as high as mine. So, Jeff, it's come to the time to name a beer of the episode. Yes, it has. And I'm just going to jump right in there because I think I know what this one is. Do you, Ed? We're from Canada, so we like dirty hippies and draft dodgers. Oh, we love them. So uh, I have a feeling Brill episode's going to be St. Beatnik. I have a feeling you'd be right. The first two beers, uh, you know, the first one was pretty good. I actually started to enjoy it as I drank it. Second one, a little bit mediocre, but uh, the chocolate stout really shone through. As soon as I opened it up and I smelt that rich chocolatey aroma, I was pretty excited for trying it out. Chocolate is part of everyone's Christmas tradition. You have it in some form or another, unless you're fucking crazy. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think it's definitely the beer of the day. 
Absolutely. And that goes back to my point about the, the Maybach and like how you said it was a summer beer. This is a Christmas advent calendar beer. It makes me think of Christmas. It's got a Christmas name. And that's what I love about it. I don't want any summer beers in my Christmas beer advent calendars. You know, Ed, it's our first episode with this new female beer announcer. And I gotta say, things are going terrible. She is mean and she hit me in the nutsack and I don't like her. Well, unlike you, I'm a magician, and I kind of feel like I can bring this back around. How are you going to do that? Magic, of course. Okay, but like, magic that does what? Only time will tell, my friend. Only time will tell. You have no fucking clue what to do, do you?